Alright Battletech fans, in order to paint this miniature today, we're going to need the following Citadel and Privateer Press paints. Null Oil Shade, Privateer Press Bastion Gray, Lead Belcher, Rune Fang Steel, Evil Sun Scarlet, Caroburg Crimson, Wraith Bone, and the Technical Tesseract Glow. And we'll need the following brushes. Any old base coating brush will do. This one's just an old favorite of mine. Then I have the Wargamer Regiment brush right here. It's kind of a smaller version of the base coating brush. Then I have the Wargamer Character brush from Army Painter right there. As you can see, it's my small detail brush. And then here I just have a well-loved, well-used dry brush. But really, any dry brush will work. All right, and to start things off, we're going to get out our Null Oil shade here. And this is almost like how I did in the Ghost Bear Alpha Galaxy video. We're just going to load our brush up. And I'm using my mid-sized base coating brush here. Nothing special, nothing fancy. You can tell this brush has seen better days. <laughs> but it's still good for the purpose, so let's get after it. I'm just going to start coating this guy. Or gal, as it seems. And I'm just going to try my best to get as much even coverage as I can without too much of that pooling that I've mentioned in the past that we don't want. I'm only trying to get it in even, you know, bits over the miniature here. It doesn't have to be artful. It doesn't have to be, you know, precise. You're just trying to get coverage of everything. And you'll notice I'm using my brush to kind of wick away some of these areas where I feel like it's pooled a little more than what I want. You'll want to do that too if you can. And see I got a big pool right there so I'm going to sop up some of that while I still can. And when you're going at this I don't want you to worry about getting any of this null oil in the cockpit area. We'll just go over that later so don't worry about being super precise at this early juncture. And just go ahead and get it in there. It sop it up, obviously, you know, but it's not the end of the world if some of it gets in there. Just try as best as you can to get the undercarriage. That's a spot a lot of folks tend to miss. Get it in there in those little vents. Again, we're just going for even coverage here. This isn't rocket science. We're going to go with the arms now. And just go back into that null oil whenever you feel like you need to. You know, if you feel like you need more, go get it. Now you don't have to put this stuff on the gun barrels. You'll notice here that I'm going to avoid getting any on these particular gun barrels, but I am going to get some of this null oil on the areas that surround the gun barrels because that's important. You don't want to miss that. But the gun barrels themselves, we're going to paint over those later with uh, lead belcher, so that's nothing you have to sit and fixate too hard on. Just grab any pools if it's too much, pick it up. And we'll move on to arm number two. Trying as best I can to get the most even coverage possible and the neat thing about this particular method is you don't have to worry about getting any on the legs because the legs are all going to be the same color so you don't have to worry about it. Usually in these two-tone color schemes that I end up doing uh, I end up getting pissed because some of the color gets on the leg and that's not where I wanted it but in this case the entire thing is black. Now some of you have asked in the past why do I do this particular method when I'm painting something all black as opposed to just busting out, you know, my army painter matte black or Citadel Abaddon black, something like that? And the reason is I was taught by another painter uh, very early on when I started painting that black is not a color that exists in nature. You know, whenever you see something in nature that you think is black, what you're really looking at is a very dark dark blue or a very dark brown you know something to that effect uh, you're not looking at something that's actually black it's just a trick that your eyes kind of play on you and they said so if you're painting black avoid painting direct black so this honestly if you want my honest opinion uh, Null Oil when you start like this kind of reminds me of the contrast paint that they have uh, basilicanum gray is what I'm thinking because I've, I've tried basilicanum to do this and it doesn't get the exact results that I, I like but 
it gets pretty close, so I have a feeling that Basilicanum Gray is probably the closest thing to Nuln Oil. So if you don't happen to have any Nuln Oil on hand and you don't want to go out and buy any, then you know don't worry too terribly hard about it. If you happen to have some Basilicanum Gray, I'd say go ahead and use that. And the neat thing about this is you don't have to worry about thinning anything down. It's already about the consistency of milk. So just spread it on there. Have fun with it. Enjoy the process, as I like to say. Don't worry about getting the undersides of the foot if you don't want to, because we're going to put basing material on that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a once over here with my eyes, and I'm going to look around and see if there's any spots that I missed. Like, see, I can tell I missed a little bit in the arm right there. Not a problem. We'll go ahead and grab that. Or if I see any spots that are pooling in a way that I don't like, I'm going to use my brush to kind of sop that up, wick it away, so that it's not causing me too much of a problem there. Missed a little bit there, no problem. Missed a little in there. All fixed. All right, so now it's time for some dry brushing. So I've got my P3 Bastion Gray out and I've got my dry brush here. And as you can see, this is just a well-loved dry brush, but you can use any kind of dry brush really that you have. If you have one of the Army Painter ones, you can use that, the small or the large. It's really just up to you, but this is just the kind that I have. So let's get into this. So I've got my napkin out here and this is what I use to brush off most of the paint. So I'm gonna put a decent little chunk of paint on my brush here. If you look there, you can see. And I'm just gonna dab it around and make sure that I wipe the vast majority of it off before I start applying it to the miniature. I'm just gonna kinda go all around. I'm gonna use my fingernail here as a, as a test. Still seems like I'm getting too much paint, so. Yeah, that feels about right. Now, that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna move the brush all over it and I'm not even gonna try to be accurate with it. This is just going as inaccurately as I can. I'm just trying to cover the vast majority of the miniature here. And this is gonna bring out a lot of the high points and it'll make all of the recesses of the miniature seem a lot deeper than they are. If I need to go back for some, I still have some on the napkin here. So I'll wipe it off another quick test seems good and we'll just keep going you want to layer this up you don't want to go from super dark to super light like that you want to kind of just take it up a little bit at a time because when you're looking at this from arm's length or you're standing up over the table and you're looking down at it you want to tell that it's dark but only upon closer inspection do you want to see that it's got these highlights in this lighter gray. But from a distance, those other recesses and those little nooks and crannies will look far more sunk in and it will add the illusion of detail when you didn't actually really do anything crazy to begin with. So let's move on to the next step, shall we? And so our next step is metallics. And this one's kind of a three-part step. First, I'm gonna use Lead Belcher to paint on all the places that I want to be metallic. Then I'm gonna use Null Oil to get those deep recesses in there. And once that's dried, I'm gonna use Rune Fang Steel to really bring out the detail on those gun barrels. Now I've got my Army Painter brush here. This is the Wargamer Regiment brush. Easy stuff to find. I'm just gonna get a little bit of water in the bristles there. And we're just gonna to go to town here. Now what I always advise people to do when you're starting off on this kind of thing is to just pick what parts you want to be metallic 
before you start. A little bit of planning goes a long way and it'll help you figure out where you want to be. So I'm just going to gently paint these gun barrels going back to the pot whenever I feel like I need some more. Let's break on through to the other side here. my gun barrels. Now the next thing I'm going to move on to is this little grate. Now we're going to work on the side torso gun. Now a lot of times on these dire wolves, another thing I like to get is I like to get these arm joints here, the shoulder and the elbow, I like to get the hip joint, and I like to get whatever that is just because it seems like a cool idea. So remember, this is 80's rule of cool here. If it looks cool, do it, but you are in no way bound to whatever it is that I do. So if you decide that you want to do something different, I say go for it. At the end of the day, it's your miniature. So you should paint the areas silver that you like the best. Let's not forget the side vents right here. It's the next thing I'm going to tackle. Now, on the back we got some vents, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to get the inside of the leg joints here. I figure if I've done the outside, I might as well do the inside too. Another thing I like to do is I like to do the legs back here. You see these little slats? I like to get them. But that's just optional, really. If you don't want to, don't, don't worry about it. That's just a thing that I like to do. And since I did the back, we're going to do the front, too. Right inside the leg. And last, we got this little tiny gun right here on the front. You can see it right under the nose. just for the sake of completeness, I suppose. And now it's time to go over this with a little bit of Nuln Oil. Same brush as I used to apply the paint, my Wargamer Regiment brush from Army Painter. I'm just gonna apply liberally over all of the metallic areas.
that's over. Missed that tiny little gun right there. All right. And we'll give that a little bit to dry and we'll come back for the next step. And the last part of this step is to dry brush my metallics with Rune Fang Steel. So for that, I've got a small dry brush from Army Painter. Pull that out. And again, I'm just gonna get my brush in the paint right there. And as you can tell here, I've got very little on the bristle. So I'm just gonna brush most of that off. Test it on the thumb here. Seems good. And we're just gonna dry brush only the parts that I want to shine. So we're gonna do the gun barrels, but I'm only gonna do the tops of them. I'm not gonna do the bottom because that part would be in shadow, so that doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm just gonna get the top of this guy here, the gun barrel that's on the side of the machine. I'm not gonna worry about these vents here on the side. They're recessed, you wouldn't be able to see them. I'm gonna get that vent just a tad, not a lot. I'm not gonna worry too hard about the shoulder joints here, but I will get the elbows for grins. I'm not gonna worry too hard about the leg stuff either. I'm just gonna let that be. And now it's time for the red highlights. So I'm gonna get out my Evil Sun Scarlet here, and then I'm gonna get out my small detail brush. This is the character brush from the Army Painter Wargamer series. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the miniature, I'm gonna look around for a little bit, and I'm gonna decide where I want this red. Now, personally, if you ask me, Natasha doesn't really go heavy on the red. They're just mainly highlights. That's just my opinion. You don't have to agree with it, but I'm not gonna go crazy hard in the paint on here. What I think I'm gonna do is these outer edges of the shoulder here. I'll do a little bit on each arm, maybe a little bit on the foot, like right here, in the very front where the stripes are. I think I'll call it good. So that's what I think I'm gonna go for on this. I think where I got it's pretty good. So I'm gonna let this stuff dry and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so let's get out our Carolberg Crimson now. We're gonna go over the reds with this. And I'm just gonna use the same brush here that I used to apply it. So I'm gonna get out my character brush. And just remember with this stuff, folks, a little bit goes a long way. You don't have to do a whole heck of a lot. I'm just gonna go over all the spots that I did in red with this stuff.
right, now that we've accomplished that, we're gonna move on to the real fun part, the cockpit. All right, now it's time for us to get out our wraith bone for one of the final steps. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my small detail brush here, put a little bit of paint on it, and then I'm gonna paint white all in this cockpit area there. That way, when I get the tesseract glow out, it'll shine much brighter, and it'll give that cockpit kind of a ghostly, ghoulish type of glow, which I think is very appropriate for Natasha Kerensky. So, let's get started. Gonna leave a little bit of water in my bristles there to help thin the paint out. And let's finish this off with some Tesseract Glow and the same small detail brush as I used before. You'll only need a tiny dab of this stuff in the cockpit area here to make it really glow. Spray that down with some dull coat and see how she looks. Now I've gone ahead and sealed it with some dull coat. I've painted the sides of the base so that it's easy to know which side of the miniature is the front face. And I've also added a basic basing to really make the last of this stuff pop out. I can do more basing videos if that's what you're interested in, but I just wanted something to showcase the final product that made it look super cool. So here she is. Well everybody, I sure hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and remember, if you want to see more tutorials like this one, subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below and tell us what you'd like to see next. Otherwise, thank you once again for watching, I'm Tuck Davian, and we will see you next time out on the Space Lanes. Remember, you have to be a subscriber and leave a comment. Crowdfunding is when lots of people give you small amounts of money to help your passion project come to life.